Hey, everybody. This is Andrew and JC, and we are here for a awesome 41st episode of the show. Wow. And uh, this one kind of came together last minute. Um, everybody knows that I had some struggles recently this week and found myself staying in a hospital with my son for uh, over four days. And so I had a conversation with our guest for his show with JC. And so we were able to have him come on with us tonight. And we're going to chat about yeah, whatever it is we chat about. And uh, cool. I will introduce him, as always, after the intro. The truth is out there. Never stop looking. Never be sheep. Always disrupt. We are the ungovernable. We are the truth seekers. We are Sasquatchers. Wow. That's a way better are. intro than the one I used to have, but I think you would like the, the old one. So blows uh, my eardrums out. <laughs> So we are here with Brandon from the Tinfoil Tells podcast. And like I said, we just talked to him for an extended period of time on his show and we enjoyed it so much. We're going to try to do it again here on ours. So uh, without further ado, we will uh, introduce Brandon and let him kind of introduce himself to you all. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Glad to finally get a chance to talk to Andrew and JC. We've kind of chatted back and forth for several months, but it's just been so chaotic with life and everything going on that it took a while to get things going, but definitely glad to be here. You may have heard I host Tinfoil Tales podcast. It's kind of similar to what they do here at Sasquatchers. Basically, I interview people that have experiences that ranges from anything from paranormal to cryptids to ufos to conspiracies anything that is outside of the normal mainstream is something that i'm interested in and i've had some experiences and i love what i do it's about the gist of it i guess yeah and uh, uh the podcast is it was really fun and i think that you were extremely accommodating to us and i thank you for being able to kind of work around the craziness that hit me this week and um i i hope everybody if you're not already familiar with it and i think you should be that you uh, seek out the podcast and and take a look because i think it's uh, it's real solid work. And of course, everybody who listens knows that we are tight with, you know, Rye and, and, and Tom from the Lost Frequency. And you uh, had collaborated with them too. And I enjoyed those collaborations or the share cast or whatever that you guys mm -hmm. ended up doing. And honestly, like a lot of stuff, those uh, Lost Frequency podcasts kind of put me on to a lot. So I can honestly say that through those guys that's kind of how i discovered you and it was completely unrelated to how you and i started talking on reddit i, I believe was kind of the origin of our conversation and yeah. kind of booking this uh night that we did finally and uh good old reddit yeah <laughs> you know, so living proof right here that sometimes reddit can work out in your favor because I am terrible with, I, I get banned from Reddit constantly. Uh, people get, <laughs> boot me out of the paranormal stuff. And then I thought I'd have better luck if I got out of the paranormal and I started doing some other subreddits and I was in a garage band subreddit that immediately everybody just turned on me. And so I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm going to just kick a can and go home and stop paying attention to this. I got attacked because when I got downvoted, I asked a question about how to, better promote the podcast in a podcasting thing and someone said we get asked this question all the time but i listed that my podcast is already successful in the sense of i've been doing it for a little over a year and like just the amount of downloads and other like 
I was like, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at, but I would like to continue to help it grow. And someone got all crappy with me, basically saying that this is posted all the time. Why don't you go back and look at notes? And I said, I already mentioned, I'm not looking to do the typical, I'm looking for outside the box things. And because I said that I kept getting downvoted. I was like, this is so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's a weird soapbox that people have on, on there that, you know, before the podcast, I'd never touched Reddit. I never went to Reddit. I've never yet been on it. It's a cesspool. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I try, I try my best because, you know, like everybody, I'm doing a show here that I'd like to get some listeners and some people to pay attention to. So, yeah, and even networking, there, you know, there's lots of reasons to reach out to people on there, but. I just have the terrible luck, and I guess it's not just me. I feel better now hearing that it's a cesspool for everybody else. But I think I messaged you because someone was actually yeah. trolling you. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "That guy's a troll. He's not being serious." <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what I posted about, but there was yeah, a, something with experience or something like that. I think, and this dude was telling you to talk to this uh, researcher. Dr. Drew something or another. I was like, that's not even a real person. Like he's tried that shit on me and it's literally just, he has like 15 different accounts and he just makes up stuff and he argues with himself and it's like, it's craziness. <laughs> it's classic yeah. Redditor right there. <laughs> what, what's funny is like, you didn't get to me in time. So the guy that he told me to reach out to, I sent this huge thing to, <laughs> and he just never even responded. So when you told me, I was like, all right, I'm going to block this guy. But yeah, no, he, no, he, he did the same. Me. He did the same thing to me. He was commenting on something that I posted, and like these other his other alternate names were commenting back, and I kept getting downvoted. And I was like, "Why am I being downvoted?" And all these people are like upvoting each other's comments, but when I would respond back to this guy, I kept getting downvoted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't understand the whole trolling of Reddit. That can be an entire episode in itself of the the conspiracy of Reddit. I'm surprised you didn't get banned for even mentioning that you had a podcast because even in the podcast friendly groups or the paranormal groups, I have been banned for even mentioning that I had a show. There's like so many hoops that you have to go to, to talking to people on there because they're so against advertising, I guess, which to an extent I can understand, but when you get into some of those subreddits that tend to be very niche and specific to what we do, it seems to be even harder to promote your show or talk to people and get, you know, make connections or get yourself out there in any way. Yeah. It's, um, I did get banned from humanoid encounters. I got banned for three days and I argued with the mod they said I was self-promoting. I was like, I didn't even name my podcast. I said, <laughs> someone had talked about seeing this thing. I was like, hey, if you ever want to talk about it, I'd be interested in having you maybe come on a pot, my, an episode sometime. That's all I said. They're like, you're self-promoting. I was like, how the hell is that self-promoting? Like, well, your name is your podcast. So that's self-promoting. I was like, you're a freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> People that are mods on Reddit think they're like the holy grail of internet or something. I don't know. Like, they sit on their pedestals and look down up everyone. Oh, I'm a moderator of a subreddit. Yeah, those are like the same dudes that grew up being mods on pro boards back in the day. And there's like a <laughs> weird elitism that comes with that, I think. I don't I don't get into it. It's it's all stupidity. Like I said, I don't deal with the drama on any certain aspect. So if people on Reddit get mad at me, if people on the internet get mad at me, oh well. <laughs> I still got to get up and go to work the next day. I don't care that someone's offended. Yeah. And we had a, a really fun couple of weeks uh, when we had a Facebook group that was trying to destroy <laughs> us. <laughs> it was, uh, oh uh, man. It was, it got very, I got very petty with it. <laughs> we, and I think you needed to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, the thing that got me banned. So there was a Sasquatch group where it's very clear that like the, the admins of the group and most of the people in the group do not believe in Bigfoot at all, but they have it open and the group is called like, what was it? It was like real Sasquatch believers or something like that. Like it's a honeypot for Sasquatch people to go I, in. I've noticed that of. most of these are literally like, yeah breeding grounds for trolls yeah like they yes, want they want you to go in 
thinking that it's a place where you can talk about yeah. this stuff so that they could then spend their time ridiculing you like they have like and, and they so drew posted something in there and the, everybody just started gang piling on him and just shitting on him and the two <laughs> two of the main culprits were like the admins and I've started like I was interested in like what this group was about. So I started going back like just I had like an hour or two. Nothing was going on, you know, so I'm just sitting there scrolling back through all these posts all the way back. I made it all the way back to like 2019. And what they were accusing Drew of, they had done themselves. And I took all these screenshots of these posts from the people that were accusing Drew of things. I posted them and then I got into it with the admin the group so it was my final my final um shot at him i took his facebook profile picture and put it in paint and added little tears and told him to stop crying about it and posted that (laughs) and he immediately he commented something but then blocked me so fast i couldn't even see what he had commented (laughs) but i i still have that picture of him to this day and i'm not afraid of showing it and then they spent (laughs) they spent weeks getting a shadow band and uh it was yeah it was wild (laughs) every day i would get on to try to promote the show or do something on the on you know one of our pages through facebook i would see that we um were reported for doing something against community standards and it wouldn't just be that message it would be like this has been reported by several people or multiple people (laughs) think you suck and (laughs) the only time that that occurred was when we when these people were beefing with us and you know after a couple of weeks you know i started that's why i started we i have a second page on facebook that's dedicated to our show called sasquatchers andrew because i was like well number one i don't want these people ever having any type of troll fuel by seeing my like real life family or whatever and number two they're really hurting my ability to promote the show that we just started so uh i I, because of that, I had to create a second page. But I've yeah, honestly, man. I've been debating on making a second Facebook, but I hate it in general. So I don't want to have a second one. But I don't like having my personal stuff intermingled with the podcast because I think we mentioned it on my show a little bit. You don't know who you're really talking to. You don't know who's out there looking at your stuff. I have photos of my family. Right. You don't know what you're getting involved with. You don't know what these people's intentions really are. Don't feed the trolls. Like, especially when you start going into certain avenues with these different groups and stuff like that, like alien abduction groups, cryptid groups, conspiracy groups. You don't know what type of people are involved in these groups, and they might believe in certain things. And I know the stigma is that all all these people are crazy. I don't think they're all crazy doesn't mean there's not some in there too. And I was warned about a guy that's literally 20 something miles away from where I live. They're like, if you ever get a message from this guy, don't respond to it. The dude's a known child predator. I was like, I was like, he he can try something. I was like, I guarantee he's not gonna like the outcome of it because I don't play them games. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 100%. Um, that's, uh, at, when I first started the show, I never imagined like I'm gonna have a following. I'm gonna have people that are, you know, joining our groups. You know, uh, I started the podcast and uh, we got like 15 members in my Facebook group, and I was like, oh man, this is awesome. You know, I didn't ever expect that it would grow to, to over 600 people that uh, actually don't interact as much as when we did when there were 15 people in it but there's still <laughs> basically 600. ghosts hanging out in there <laughs> yeah 600 I, people joined the group that then would have had access to my all of my photographs and stuff uh, of the kids. my groups that got like 60 people and i think i'm the only one that's ever posted in there <laughs> yeah it's that's disheartening it bums me out because when we didn't have a lot of people it was kind of busted and we yeah had, we had quite a lot of interaction for a while in there And that's the type of stuff that at least early on kind of made me feel good. And like what we were doing was, was reaching people. I mean, now obviously we have our analytics and we know that if people listen and watch and we have a a really cool cult following and there's some really good uh, people that support us in ways, but uh, yeah, there's so many strangers. 
we could talk about the Discord stint. <laughs> <laughs> or, we, or the lack of <laughs> I have a discord too but I don't even advertise the link anywhere so no one can join it <laughs> no we advertised it we advertised the Man, shit I advertised out of the it. shit out of it guess what we we'd like it, myself drew and two other people for like weeks then drew pulled the drew one day posts in there he's like we got to kill this then he texts me he's like kill this stupid thing <laughs> so the disc the discord rip rest in peace to that the idea it's like a my Patreon. I literally got a second person today, second subscriber. I was like, oh, "Hell nice. yes!" That's I, I feel, I honestly, feel great. I have two people. <laughs> that's two more than we have. <laughs> yeah, I got to the point where I started a Patreon, but I was defeated by it because everything that I tried to upload didn't like it was too large, and I was like, "I don't know how much more I can, you know, compress this thing without <laughs> sacrificing." Compress all of down the audio. like fourteen kit. <laughs> Like 14 kilobyte videos. It looks like you're watching. I don't know what the limit is, but (laughs) it's 500 megs, isn't it? Is that what we discovered? I can't even remember. But even like with my hosting service, I have to upload like smaller MP3s and I just have them set at 90 or 192, I think, KBS or whatever it is. Yeah. And they seem to be all right. But sometimes I go full idiot and try and upload the wave. I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Uh, file is too large. I was like, how the hell is that too large? Like, oh, it's the wave file. Duh. <laughs> but also, this is a a subscription platform where people are paying for your content. You should be able mm-hmm. to provide something a, that is, is a little better. bit better quality. Yeah. Yeah, for real. So well, you we know were, what a lot of a lot of people do is they they put they don't actually host the content on Patreon. They just host the links to a private YouTube channel or something like that. So you get access by subscribing, but you don't actually watch the videos on Patreon. You get redirected to like their content. The only thing I got on mine right now is all the episodes early. So when I get done like recording an episode and putting it together, I post it on Patreon. Right now I've got 12. No. With you guys and recorded last night and then the other day, I have 15 episodes waiting to be released. Wow. I only was releasing one episode a week, so I have a huge backlog of episodes. So I started feeling bad again, so I've been releasing two episodes a week for the month of March just to try and get caught up. It's March March Madness, right? Yeah. (laughs) So once I get caught up, but then in April, I've got some interviews scheduled, and then I'm not going to do any more interviews for a little bit just because I don't know how baseball season is going to play out because – all of my kids are either in softball or baseball. Nice. And that takes up most of my May and June and into July. So without having to schedule anything, I don't want to try and schedule something, not knowing how their games are going to be scheduled. So that's why I try to keep a bigger backlog. But when it comes to like the interviews and everything else, like it almost gets overwhelming because then I, I feel bad. Like people will record with me. And I'm like, yep, it'll come out in like five months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I guess if they have something that they're trying to promote real quick, but I think that they would probably let you know that going into it. Yeah, anyone that wants me to put the episode out at a specific time, I do. But, so I shuffle things around, but I have one coming out pretty soon, and I have a feeling it's going to be too controversial and probably turn off a lot of uh, my uh, listener base, but... Whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> we can't we can't just gloss over this. You gotta come on, give us give us a little bit of uh ten tendies here. They wrote a book and it's all backed by their data, and it is called Christ Before Jesus. And it basically in their book they've determined that Jesus was made up after the fact. He's not a real person or character based off of what their research has discovered. And I'm not a religious person, so it doesn't affect me. But I know a lot of the listener base has like Christianity beliefs or anything like that. And it basically, they're saying that the New Testament is not accurate. And that might rub people the wrong way. It's like I said, I don't agree with any of the religions because I'm just not very religious in general. So it's like, It's not controversial to me, but I've noticed a lot of comments I get on certain posts, especially for like Dogman and paranormal stuff or whatever. It was like, oh, 
God made this. Jesus is, say Jesus' name. This and that. I was like, okay, well, those people are probably going to unsubscribe now once they hear this episode. <laughs> There's a, yeah. a, a huge amount of people that I didn't expect that were interested in the type of fringe mm-hmm. topics that we talk about that are actually right. super religious. See, mm-hmm. I actually, I've seen two sides to it. There are people that are like super religious, like Christians, and then there are like the like the witchcraft pagan side that does nothing but blame Christianity for everything, and they just all tangle back and forth, and that's like the two sides of the paranormal community. <laughs> if that doesn't get me canceled, the episode that's about to come out here soon probably will too. It's the, oh. uh, the Rothschild episode. Where, oh, yeah, you're uh, done. Just yeah. for even mentioning it, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> We go into a little deep dive with another podcast. They came on the show and they did a research on the Rothschilds and it led into uh, other topics that I was like, well, probably going to get canceled over this one, but whatever. Had a good run. <laughs> uh, if it makes you feel better, I'll listen to it in full because I actually don't know what you're talking about. And JC kind of seems to know. So I, I must be the one that's the. Uh, outlier here i don't know what I'm, guess, I'm guessing it goes into uh some 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 territory i'm not gonna get super yeah. hardcore in here but i yeah. think i think we both know which direction it probably goes right yeah about yeah a specific type of family and people mm-hmm. and yeah. where, people. Where, where they stem yeah. from and uh-huh. where all the money <laughs> from the controls of the world yeah. comes from yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'll, be, that'll be that'll be a fun one for me. I'll be looking for it. Yeah, you're instantly it probably won't. He, he won't be able to hear it because it's not even going to get posted. As soon as it tries to air, I'm going to get another Facebook or not a Facebook, but another uh, YouTube <laughs> banning. I already had one episode banned. No, really. Yeah. What was it about? Uh, it wasn't banned because of what the topic was about. It was banned because the guy was talking about what happened during the beast era is what we refer to it as during 2020, 2021. And people were supposed to take their vitamins and their fruits and vegetables and the jabby jabs and everything else. And his mom had done all that, but she still passed away. So he said that she'd done that. She still caught the beast and passed away. And I got flagged for spreading false medical information. Oh man, yeah, that was happening the whole a lot. the yeah. whole topic though of the episode is the guy has an iPhone and if he uses the eye image or whatever it's called iPhoto where it still has some movement to it when he takes pictures of people he can actually see that they're aliens in disguise because their faces morph and he can see by changing the filters on the photos he can find UFOs in the sky and there's a planet circling around the sun and there's one coming close to earth and all the clouds are actually spaceships. Like it is some out there stuff that didn't cause a flag. It was literally cause he said his mom passed away. Wow. It's like, I was like, so that's the most controversial part of this episode is the fact that <laughs> she passed away and you're going to ban my video because he'd said something about that. Okay. Did you ever get it put back up or did you just nope. kind of keep it on I, the I fought it and they said it does not meet their uh, standards. <laughs> That's wild. You should put it on Rumble. <laughs> yeah, the they're audio is still left. available. Like the audio is still out there. I think it's like episode yeah. 20 or 21, 22, something like that. But it's on like for anyone to listen to. It's just not available on YouTube. Which I love, I love Rumble. audio. Yeah, I love Rumble because, like Drew said, it's literally it's it's what the internet was in like two thousand. Wild just West. the unregulated <laughs> Wild West. There's anything you want to go on there and talk about things that are going to get you banned anywhere else. You can go on there. You can say any words you want. You can slur. You can <laughs> <laughs> no one no one's stopping you. Go on Rumble. <laughs> I've thought about it, but again, I don't do a whole lot of videos anyways. The YouTube is literally just generated from my podcast hosting service. So I don't use the video for anything in general. And it's like, whatever, but no, basically, uh, I've had some controversial topics and of all the things that we've talked about, I was like, why is that the one that gets me in trouble? Yeah. But controversial topics are great though. Right. Because that's what fosters, like that's how, that's how open communication and like freedom and stuff supposed to work is by having these like hard discussions and, and blocking that doesn't do anybody any good. When you're a conspiracy type person like myself, 
and then you ban my content. You're just kind of oh, reinfor- see, <laughs> you're you're reinforcing me to believe Bart- in- they're martyring you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're reinforcing the belief that you're trying to control the narrative. <laughs> One of the most interesting things that I've been seeing lately it's been banned on YouTube are the, the child predator takedown videos where oh. like like these dudes they're getting taken down and their contents being banned from YouTube because they're just dumb stuff like there wasn't law enforcement in the video they didn't give disclaimers they didn't do this stuff and then like even after they went through all these hoops and they filmed the law enforcement and they proved all this stuff like they still get banned so they all i've been going to rumble i've noticed because that's like my guilty pleasure and like when i'm laying in bed at night i'll watch like child predator takedown videos and (laughs) stuff and i think drew recently has been doing that as well uh, I I do it all the time. That's one of my favorite yeah. non paranormal things to do is watch those. And there's a local one out here that I tried to join and they just never <laughs> responded. I don't know if well, they... by by trying to join, Drew means he was the one inside the Walmart when they showed up. <laughs> <laughs> you got they, it. Uh... the video will be out soon. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I have another podcast. We haven't been doing anything the last few weeks, but it's called Dark Side of the Scene. It's a music related one. And we were interviewing someone about a month ago and they started talking about one of these guys that they were trying to start a band with and they don't do anything with him, but they kept referring to like making comments or something. I was like, I don't care. We're on a live stream. There's no one watching. So it doesn't really matter to me. I was like, who are you talking about? And then they end up kind of referring to who he is. I found him on Facebook and I shared the whole, like who he was on the screen. So anyone interested in knowing he was making very inappropriate comments about like a four year old. I think they was like, and then just very, very creepy stuff. I was like, I don't care. People like that. I'm going to put on blast and they need to have their information put out there because they're creeps and they don't deserve to go around being a creep. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I don't think that's a hot take at all. I think no, everybody no, if no. disagree with so that. I'm- I'm interested about this, the dark cells, their dark cells, dark side of the scene and, and what that exactly that is. So I think you'd mentioned that you'd been in like metal bands Mm -hmm. and that in the past. So is this, is this a podcast that just delves in like, so there's the dark side of the ring, right? Yeah. So is this, I ripped off the the metal band version of, it's not so much metal bands. We interviewed a lot of different bands. Most of them were metal because for some reason that's just who always kept reaching out to us. But we've had some other groups that reached out to us as well. And it started off pretty good. Like we had a lot of people wanting to come on the show. It was doing decent numbers for being a brand new podcast. And then again, controversy. We ended up interviewing someone that for some reason or not, the interview didn't so much affect or didn't go into effect about the music. It did and it didn't, but his version of the dark side was he gets canceled no matter everything he does because he supposedly is being accused of assaulting his ex fiance, but he was never charged with anything. He proved all that. She was the one that was arrested and all this other stuff. And no matter what he does, he gets harassed for everything he does because she labeled him as an abuser. But yet she went to jail. She was the one that was arrested. He had all the cuts on him. Doesn't matter. He's the abuser. He's always attacked. So it said it hurts his music career. As soon as that episode aired, we started getting harassed by people. And ever since it aired, like our audience completely just like disappeared. Hindsight 2020, should I release that episode? Because it didn't have anything to do with real. It did and it didn't. I don't know. I ended up deleting the episode because the girl kept harassing us saying, and he's spreading lies and this and that. I was like, I literally paid money to do a background check on this guy and prove that he really didn't get it. He's never been charged with anything. So it's like, I don't know. But then we went on a little bit of, we went on a little bit of a hiatus and we came back doing live streams and now we're just kind of back on a little bit of a hiatus. I assume we might do some more interviews, but it got to the point to where all of our interviews are starting to run the same. Like people are there's no audience at this point. Like we were getting like four or five downloads a week. I was like, two of those are probably us. So it's like, 
in the per the person we're interviewing. So it's like no one's listening. So what's the point? That's unfortunate did... that you ran into that. I don't. That's, it bums me out that that Cancel kind of culture sport goes. of public opinion could hit somebody even even like the, that. This yeah. happened out in California. We're from Indiana, and we were being harassed by someone who had been in prison. He left negative comments on our stuff, a bad review. He went to my co-host band and started labeling us racist and oh. wife beaters. <laughs> Oh, okay. My co he said we were white like white supremacists. My co host is a hundred percent Mexican. Mm. <laughs> but he's a white supremacist, apparently. Makes I was sense. like, this is it's freaking the, the, La, the La Raza that he's viva in is white people. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's completely stupid. Like there's no I was like, how are you gonna call us racist and like white supremacists and women abusers and everything else when you have no idea even who we are and didn't even bother to check to see if we were even white or not? And that's kind of, I don't know, maybe in some way, I, kind of gratifying. I mean, obviously, it sucks that your podcast was affected by it. But at the same time, to have that level of hate come at you, like, it has to also feel good in, in a sense. Like, somebody is, you know, how they say, you know, you have that rent-free in their head uh, mindset. And that somebody is that bothered by you that they had to try to destroy you. I don't, I don't know if maybe I'm just a narcissist, but I think that that's also kind of cool and gratifying. Like it, I mean, it might justify kind of why you do what you do in a sense. I don't know. It more or less just pissed me off because <laughs> what, what's the point of attacking us? We didn't have anything to do with it. We're not the ones that did anything. They're like, well, you're giving him a platform. You're letting him yeah. spread his, no. Mm, it's like those whatever. buzzwords i hate those buzzwords platform mm. and deep platform and all i, I say platform because it is for my show it is kind of what it is i don't really do a whole lot of talking on tinfoil tells so i let people do all the talking and with dark side again it's kind of the same concept that i let people come on there and talk about the bad things that happen to them playing music now we've had people say they gotten their gear stolen up in chicago we've had people come on there and say they've had like bad band members obviously like y'all deal with all sorts of crap so there's nothing that's what people think that i think when i was doing my show they wanted to check that out they're probably thinking oh it's about weird stuff that these band members have encountered no it's the weird stuff in the sense of hey we went we drove 400 miles to play a show and there's nobody here and we're not getting paid like that's the type of stuff that we talked about or the new thing is you go and play a show and you have shirts or stickers or whatever you're selling. The venues are taking a cut of how much you sell merch cuts. That's a big controversy right now. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I don't... that they should have a cut of anything you're doing. If you have your own merch person, if you have your own, you paid your own money for stuff. Why should a venue have any sort of cut of what you have? They didn't put any money into it. I don't know if it was on Eddie Trunk or some other show that I was listening to where they got really deep into that. And I had no idea that that was going on, but that's that's huge right now. Yeah, that's one of the big main issues that bands are fighting with is the fact that these venues are taking money basically out of their own pockets for stuff they have zero to do with. They're already losing money from your record label. You're already losing money from your tours. You're already losing money elsewhere. Now the money you spend on getting your merch made venues are taking a cut from it yeah i saw make any sense I, there was a big and i know it's here in the states too but there was a big thing i mean this was like a year ago about bands playing in europe like american bands or whatever because there's already a 20 percent vat tax added on top of things that are sold and then the venue was trying to take 20 percent. so like half of anything they'd make off merch was already gone <laughs> yeah and it's it's pathetic so I haven't ever ran into that personally, but I haven't done band stuff in four years. So the last time I'd done something was literally two nights before lockdown. Mm. So you we caused had, it. Probably. <laughs> we, uh, we played a show in Indianapolis on a Wednesday. I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday. And the next, like two days later, I think the world was shut down. So it should be coming up here on our four year anniversary. when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so that's true. Right. Yeah. Next, like, I'll have to look that up. 
But no, basically, um, that's kind of what started the whole podcast, like me doing a podcast, because my buddy and I were talking about, it was during lockdown and everything, and we started talking about conspiracies and weird things that are going on, and I don't know, I don't lean left or right, so I don't want to rub anyone the wrong way, but I'm not a political person, I'm very much anti establishment, I guess. Like I don't, I'm, I don't believe red or blue or whatever you want to call it. Like I'm just, I'm not into politics and I know around here, that's a terrible thing to say because I am in very much a red state and I don't really fall in line with agent orange or whatever you want to call him or the other guy. It is what it is, but so we were talking about stuff like that during that whole era. And I started listening to a podcast called Government Secrets. The two guys that host that, they call themselves the most censored, demonetized comedians in America. Because the stuff they talk about has got them pretty much wiped off about some of the crap the CIA supposedly done and this and that. And like all sorts of like, basically like conspiracy type podcasts. And that's where I come up with the idea of ten foil tells was because I liked what they were doing, and it was literally like the first. I listened to Joe Rogan. Everyone knew Joe Rogan, but I've never listened to another podcast before. And for some reason, I typed in conspiracies, government conspiracies, stuff like that, just because I was bored at work and wanted something to listen to. And I found that, so I started listening to it, and I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool to start a show because I had my own whacked out ideas about certain things. My buddy and I, we were always talking about it. So let's start a podcast. So I was trying to think of a name. Tinfoil tells. Tinfoil hat. For some reason, I just was thinking, like, if you were a conspiracy person, if you talk about weird things, people are going to call you a conspiracy theory person. You wear a tinfoil hat. You're a crazy person. I'm going to talk about these conspiracies. Call them tales. Tinfoil tells. It just made sense. I thought it was a great idea. Didn't do anything with it. It wasn't up until spring of 2022 I started talking to this band and we were talking about starting something up it was a completely different band I went and dropped like for three grand on a brand new PA system which is sitting right over here with the tag still on it I mentioned that earlier on my other show I think but I went and spent all this money on a PA system and then it never even did anything we had like one practice and then they were like oh we're just going to do remote stuff you can record if you want to. So I was like, all right. Well, I went and bought this interface. I went and bought this laptop and all this stuff to record. And then that, that never panned out either. But now I have all the stuff to record. I was like, you know what? Screw it. My idea from two years ago, I'm going to start. I must do this podcast. So I got my buddy out. The first podcast we talked about was weather control. Like that was the topic for the first episode. And then we never did another episode. So I started to interview people about the weird things that they've encountered. The first person I interviewed was a dog man encounter, which if you would like, I can dog man is my bread and butter. And if you want me to tell that story, I can of why it's my bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, we can we can do that for sure. I, I can't. I honestly am blown away that it's been almost forty minutes by now. So, <laughs> getting to the the genesis of of this, I think, is a definitely a, a fun topic. Essentially, I always grew up. If anyone can see behind my head, the I can't do it backwards. <laughs> the I want to believe from the old X Files thing. That has always been like what I've wanted to do. Like I've always been interested in monsters. I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I always liked aliens. I always liked the idea of Bigfoot. I'm a big horror movie nerd. So it's like, cool. Like that stuff. But I did not believe it ever really existed. And back in 2007, it just so happened to be 17 years ago, probably a, a month ago today, 17 years ago, in like one month from the time we're recording this 
I saw something and it pretty much changed my entire perspective of reality because what I'd saw should not have been a possibility, at least not in my own known rational mind or whatever. I used to work at a paper warehouse company and I worked on thirds. It was me and a couple other guys and a lady boss. This was our Friday, so it was like Friday night, early Friday morning, so it was probably like 3.30 in the morning. She comes up and tells us that if we get everything done, she'll let us leave early. And we're going to get paid for the rest of the day because we don't usually get off to like 6.30. So if you're finding out you're going to get paid for not even being there, of course you're going to hurry up and get everything done so you can get the hell out of there. So we hurried up, busted ass, and then got out of there. Now, the road this happened on is honestly just the next road up and a couple miles over. I still live in the same general area where this happened. We're going down the road, and my coworker's in the front, and he's driving ahead of me. Now, he's probably a good thousand feet in front of me. Like, I can see his taillights or whatever, and I see him swerve off the road. He's first back on the road. I'm like, what is this dude doing? <laughs> he literally just drove off the road. Now, this is before we had smartphones. We didn't have, we weren't just scrolling on Facebook or whatever that people do these days. Yeah. Like, so the first thing I'm thinking is, did a deer run out? Like, I'm, who knows? I just seen his taillights go off the road. And then I noticed that there's something in the road as I'm getting closer. And as the closer I got to it, it literally looked like, to me, a person in a big black blanket, like wrapped up, or like someone would be wearing a big cloak, like wrapped around themselves. Because I didn't see any arms and I didn't see a head, but I could see very big legs and like its body, but it was all black. And it was leaning forward and it would take a step and its body was like, almost like twitching glitching i don't know how to describe it like it didn't look natural like it take a step and it would like like weird glitchy like super fast movements almost like maybe vibrations i don't know and i always said it looked like one of those uh inflatable wacky arm tube men you know like when the wind would blow and take yeah, a step and its like body would shuddering kind of yeah so it took a step did another step and I was just walking right in the middle of the road. I ended up swerving over too, but I basically came to a stop. So I'm trying to figure out what this is. I'm still thinking it's like a person. I'm like, is this a drunk person out here like 4.30 in the morning in the middle of nowhere, like just walking in the road? And it walks past my driver's window and I'm pretty sure it bumps into my mirror as it's walking past. And this thing is leaning forward. It almost has like, you know how an old person would be like leaning with a walker? Like, okay. it, it has like that type of a lean to its body. And I don't see the top of it as it walks past. I'm in a Ford Explorer and I looked online. They're five and a half feet from like the top of the window area. If this thing's walking past me, and that the vehicle's five and a half feet, and I can't see the top of it, this thing has to be, what, almost seven feet tall, leaning over, like, forward? Yeah, at least. So that's, that makes no sense of what this will, like, I can't be a person at this point, because I'm like, it's huge. It's too tall to be a person. And it gets behind my vehicle, and I can see, like, it's one leg, and then the other leg, and I could see like the ground and like stuff between when it would take a step. Like it wasn't translucent. It was solid because it was blocking off everything. Like my taillights are illuminated and it's just solid black. I don't see clothing. I don't see fur. I don't see anything like that. It's not like a shadow. It is like a solid figure, but it's just completely black. And I could see like the ground and stuff between each one, like its leg here, the ground and its other leg and it took it and it kept walking. At this point, I just take off. I drive down the road, and right before you get to the highway, there is a DOT parking lot. My coworker had pulled in there, so I pulled up next to him, 
and I roll down the window. He's already rolling down his, and his eyes are like bulged out. He's freaked out. He's like, did you see that? I was like, yeah, what was it? He's like, it didn't have an effing head. I was like, I know. I didn't see a head either. I didn't see arm. I was like, what the hell was that? And like, we're trying to figure out like what's going on. I was like, we got to go back because clearly I need to know what this was because this is strange. Like makes no sense to me. I want to go back. He's like, are you crazy? Maybe at this point, looking back, yes, I'm, I'm crazy, but I wanted to go back. So we go down the road. I'm in front. He's following behind me and it's only maybe a quarter of a mile. It's not very far away from where we were. But I noticed now there's something laying across the road, like directly in the center of the road, but it's laying this way. As we get closer, it looks like a very large black dog. Like it looks like a bushy black animal. I don't know what else to call it. So I'm about 30 feet from it. I parked the vehicle. My lights are still shining on it. He just pulls up behind directly behind my vehicle and I get out of my vehicle. He cracks his window down about this much. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, there's clearly a dead dog in the road. Like this must've been what we'd seen because it wasn't there earlier. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out like, this has to be what was in the road. And as I start to walk up to this thing, it lifts its head up and looks back and its eyes are glowing because our headlights are shining is what I've always said but it lets out this really low rumbly like growl and I freeze instantly because I'm like, Oh shit, this isn't dead. <laughs> like I'm thinking it's a big dead dog, but no. And the stupid thing, like it starts to like try and get up on it's all four legs and it does like a little hobble and then it stops and stands directly up like this. It's front legs were not, like a dog's would be like the where it's shoulders and stuff. It had like humanoid shouldery area. That's all I, I don't know how to describe it. Like it's front legs drop down like arms would. It didn't have human hands or humanoid feet or it didn't even have like humanoid figure. It looked like a dog, like a normal black wolf is what it honestly looked like. And it just stood there and stared at me. And I'm six foot three and this thing is eye to eye with me. I'm only about 15 feet from it and the headlights are completely shining on this thing. So I can totally see what it is. It wasn't a bear. Like again, we don't have bear here in this area of Indiana. We also don't have upright walking dogs. So, <laughs> so I'm like, my mind is like freaked out because I'm like, what is this thing? And it kneels down and goes off to the edge of the road. Now around this area is a deer preserve. And at the time they had like a big eight foot fence that went around this whole two mile squared off thing. Cause they used to have like deers in there. They'd go hunting every once in a while. Like they'd let people go in there to hunt these specific deers. This place is still there now too. It's called X factor bucks. But we went or it went off. I don't know if it went under the fence, through the fence, over the fence, it just went down to the, where the fence and it's just gone. That just couldn't see it anymore. So I walked back to my vehicle. And at this point, my coworker got out of his car and, uh, sorry, it's late. <laughs> no, that's okay. And, uh, between like for him and I are standing, cause he's up here talking to me about what the hell we just saw. I looked down at the ground and this is the weirdest part of the whole thing. The whole thing's strange, but this is the weirdest, creepiest part for me. There was a little field mouse standing between us. Now, I don't know if anyone has any idea about mice or anything like that, but I've never seen a wild mouse be that close to a human, especially two of them in the middle of the road in the middle of the night. Like I look down, it's literally right between us. And it's standing on its back legs using its front feet to wipe its face. Like it's all wet looking. Its head's all wet. It's wiping its face. I'm like, are you seeing this shit? And I like move it with my foot. It just keeps cleaning itself. Like it's oblivious that I just touched it. 
makes zero sense to me that a wild animal would allow a human to even push it and doesn't even care. It just keeps like, it's a completely in like a daze. So I'm like, all right, this is crazy. I'm going home. Let's get the hell out of here. Like, this is way too much crap going on. None of it makes any sense. I want to go home. So we both got in our vehicles. He went one way, went the other way. I went home. I went to bed. Woke up the next morning and I drew a picture, which I'm not an artist, but I drew a picture of this dog looking thing. Cause first thing I'm thinking of is werewolf because back in 2007, what else am I going to think of? Like I seen something that looked like a, a dog that looked like a person stood like a person. Like I'm thinking werewolf and I get on like one of these websites and there is a forum on there and I post the photo and I start getting comments from people saying, Oh, that is a Michigan dog man. Like what is a Michigan dog man? Never heard of that before. So I started looking into it. I'd seen about, Oh, there was a song that they made up back in, I think the seventies about a dog man and lores about this and that. And I think it was like the beast of Bray road was around that time or something. Yep. I was going to bring that up. So I was like, Oh, there's a lot of people that are talking about this. I'm, this is weird. So I try to go back to work that mon Monday night, which has been our Sunday night, like 10 o'clock and I start to talk about it and the coworker starts laughing. Like one of the other ones that was in there. It's like, Oh, did you hit a werewolf? Well, it pisses my other coworker off. So he pulls me aside over by the time clock and he basically threatens me and says that, uh, I need to knock it off. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want people thinking he's crazy. If I keep talking about it, he's just going to deny it. And everyone's going to think I'm insane because he's just going to say he doesn't know what I'm talking about. So I was like, what am I going to do? So I just didn't talk about it anymore because the only other person that can verify everything I said now doesn't want to talk about it. So it's like, and that's kind of where I got to with the podcast. Right before I made the podcast, I was at work and I told one of these guys that I was working with, because he'd mentioned something about he used to live in Alaska. And I kind of joked. Because on my keychain, I don't have it now. I think it fell off, but I had a little tiny Sasquatch. And when he mentioned Alaska, I just asked him, I was like, so did you ever see anything weird up there? I said, what do you mean? I was like, Bigfoot or anything? <laughs> He's like, no, nothing like that. And then for some reason, I just felt compelled to tell him about my experience that I just told you. And then we just sat in awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, this guy now thinks I'm a freaking lunatic, so that's cool. But never did mention it again. And uh, a couple months later, like I said, I started the podcast. The first person I interviewed was a dog man person. And then Bigfoot. And just, it just, I don't, I felt better about it. Like the more people that I've interviewed, the better I felt about what happened with my own stuff. And I never even mentioned it on my show. Like, I don't want the show to be focused on what goes on with me. I wanted to focus on the other people because I still was not ready to talk about it. And then eventually I just was like, I feel like a hypocrite. I want everyone to tell me their experiences, but I won't talk about my own. So I ended up going on a show last summer. And I honestly didn't even want to share my experience on there because... That wasn't why I was wanting to go on there, but someone back in 1990 encountered what they said was a dog man in the same areas where I live. And mine was in 2007, so it was like a 17 year difference. Well, 17 years just happened again. So I'm wondering yeah. if this year, if dog man's not back around again, because every 17 years, maybe he comes out. But the experience that the person was talking about was in 1990, they were down on the river and this thing ran into their camp, scared the crap out of them all. And they all ran out of there. This was like a werewolf or whatever on two legs running through their campsite. So I wanted to reach out to that person. So I messaged the guy that hosts the podcast and asked if he could reach out to that guest and give him my information because I'm just not even to interview. I just wanted to talk to him about it because I've never heard of anyone in my area that's ever seen a dog man. 
especially one that ran into a camp like that. So they told me they don't keep records of their old guest. He's like, but you can come on my show and talk about your experience. And if he still listens, maybe he'll reach out to you. So that was when I kind of first talked about it uh, openly. And then I mentioned it on my show and I've been on other shows now, talked about it. But for the most part, like I said, it's not really anything I enjoy talking about because it's not like I'm seeking glory from it or whatever. Like to this day, I don't know what I even encountered because I remain somewhat skeptical. I don't even know if Dogman exists. To me, everything about this thing looked like a normal wolf or dog or something. Like it didn't have the stereotypical depictions of what you think a dog man would. Now people are like, oh, you saw a bear. A bear with mange. No, this thing had very puffy fur like a chow. You guys know what a chow looks like, right? Like they're kind of got puffier, fluffy fur. Yeah. And it had a big bushy tail. Do bears have big bushy tails? Do they have pointed ears on top of their head? Like some of them might have ears, but like not dog ears. And it had a prolonged dog snout. Like it wasn't a bear. And if it was a bear, then I guess I can't identify a bear from 15 feet away. I, I need better glasses. But, but basically, I know it wasn't a bear. And for 15 years, I wrote it off as basically it had to have been a dog. And my version of what happened to make sense to myself, which doesn't end up making any sense anyways, the dog was playing with a mouse. That's why the mouse was all wet. The dog was like licking it, trying to eat it. That's why the mouse was traumatized or whatever, like in a daze or whatever. It's because the dog had been messing with it. Someone must have hit this dog in the middle of the road. It broke its front legs. So it was flopping around on two legs on its hind legs is when we seen it and drove by it because... That's why it looked all glitchy and weird looking because it was trying to walk. And when we came back by it, it fell over. And its front legs were still broken, clearly, so it stood up and then went off on its own. Like, that's what I said had to have happened. It was just a hurt dog. The mouse was traumatized from the dog playing with it. Someone ran it over. That's all fine and dandy until I go back to the original thing that I saw it was so much bigger than the dog. That first all black thing that was walking, like I said, it had to have been over seven feet tall. Its legs were super thick. They had to have been like this big around. The dog had normal proportionate size legs for a dog. So what the hell was walking in the road the first thing we seen? They didn't have a head or didn't have arms. So that's where I get hung up on that. It's like, what could it possibly have been the first thing? I can explain the dog and I can explain the mouse, but I can't explain away the very first thing that we had to swerve to miss. Yeah, so I guess like, it comes down to speculation and there's real, not really anything that I think would be a satisfying of an outcome just from speculating, but uh, just to speculate, do you think that perhaps what you saw might not have even necessarily been a dog man specifically, but perhaps you like you happened upon some type of shapeshifter, like mid change or something of that effect. So with being a skeptic and everything, it's, I don't know how to describe what I believe. I'm open to a lot of ideas. And that's what I said about why I do the podcast. Like it's hard for me being a skeptic because I can't be a skeptic. I'm very open-minded now. Because that pretty much changed my whole perception of what reality could be because I can't explain it away. And that's what I keep trying to do is explain it in a logical sense and there's no way of logically explaining what happened. Now, the possibility of a shapeshifter. I don't know if those are possible. At this point, I'm not going to say they're not because I don't know. But it makes sense to think that the first thing we saw, that everything was connected. Because I never put two and two together until recently after I started talking about this. But the first thing we saw was on two legs. The dog got up on two legs. The mouse was also on two legs. All three of those things were very strange and unnatural. So is it a possibility that the first thing we saw was something manifesting itself? Like trying to take a shape of something. 
and it ended up taking the shape of the dog. The dog didn't scare me away. I was still standing there. I didn't run off. I was just frozen. So the dog kind of goes away and doesn't manifest itself into this mouse, and that's why it's standing in between us. How did it get between us? Because the dog was going the opposite direction. So by the time I turned around, I went back to my buddy, or not my buddy, but my coworker. How did it get between us? Like where the hell did the mouse come from? So I, I don't know. Someone said we were abduct, abducted by aliens and this was just what was implanted into our brains to cover up what had really happened. Did you have They're any like, lost 